Hey guys, welcome to the video. In this video today I'm going to be showing you guys how to change the engine oil in your car. So what I'm going to go through basically to start with is we're going to have a look at what we need. So as far as tools, what we need to actually change oil in the car, so say oils, filters, things, bits and pieces like that. Then we're going to go through how to do it step by step. So the first thing we need to figure out is what tools we're going to need for the job and do we have those tools. So the most common thing that you're going to need is you'll need basically a basic socket set. Uh, sort of 3 8 drive, half inch drive socket set. Um, generally most cars will use just general size sockets. Some may be uh, imperial, some may be metric. European cars can tend to use different tools. They will use torx drivers and bits and pieces like that. Uh, the car we're going to be doing the oil change on today is a 2006 Subaru Forester. So all basic can tools, a um, couple of sockets. Alright, so this tool here is a filter strap. This is what's used for undoing oil filters. Uh, some oil filters you can undo by hand, some are a bit too tight to undo by hand um, and some as well will be quite hot because once you, before you drain the oil in a car uh, you will need to take it for a drive and get the oil nice and warm. These are really good to use. Uh, this, this one is actually a snap-on um, filter strap. I have used other brands. Um, you can get other good ones. The snap-on one um, I've had, this is the second one I've had. I did actually break the other one um, but I mean that lasted nearly seven years and um, yeah it had been pretty well tortured so these are a good strap um, I would definitely recommend getting one if you're going to be doing a lot of this kind of stuff uh, they're tough they last a long time um, and perfect for what this sort of stuff is the best thing about these is the band that's on them doesn't stretch so when you go to put a fair bit of pressure onto the to try and undo the oil filter there's no stretch in that so you get basically the most amount of movement you can have in this video as well, I will be using a jack and jack stand since I have to lift the vehicle to get to the oil drain plug. Uh, if you don't have jack or jack stands, you will need to go and get some. Don't use things like blocks of wood or bricks or anything ever to hold a car up, especially if you're going to be laying under it, it's really dangerous. Alright, so the first thing we need to do is go out of the car. We need to warm the engine up. The way I'm going to do that is I'm actually going to take the car into uh, Repco and I'm going to use the car to go in and get the parts that I need to get to do the service on it. That'll give it enough time to warm the engine up. So let's jump in the car and go get these parts. Alrighty, so we're in the car now. We're just about to head to Repco and go and get the parts for it. Alrighty, so we're back from Repco and we've got the parts we need to do the oil change. What I'm going to do is I'm going to show you the type of oil that I brought and the type of filter that I brought and just explain why. Okay, so that for the first one that I brought, I brought a Ryko oil filter for the car. You can buy other brands. Um, there are, are other good brands out there, but there are also really crap brands out there as well. So always make sure that you buy a reputable brand. If you buy, say, one of these, it means you hate your car. Always get an oil filter that is a good, reputable brand. Don't buy the cheap ones because cheap filters will tend to cost more in the long run. The oil filter for the Subaru is a Ryko Z495. Pretty well priced. They're about 14 bucks. So you're probably thinking by the logo that's on my jacket, you probably know what sort of oil I'm going to buy. And you're right. Castrol. The reason I buy Castrol is, uh, as far as quality of oil goes, much the same as Valvoline, um, but it is a little bit cheaper as well. Still really good oil, still really good for your engine, still one of the definitely better brands out there, but it's just a bit cheaper, and you don't need to go out and buy five litres of Valvoline oil at $100 when you can buy five litres of Castrol oil at 70 bucks. It's a bit cheaper and it's just as good. As far as the tools go that I'm going to use, like I said before, I am going to be using a 3 8 socket set, the filter strap, a jack, jack stands and a funnel just to pour the oil in and not make a big mess everywhere and then have to clean it all up. Alright, so what we're going to do now is we're going to bring the car in here. I'll show you the engine, I'll show you roughly what we're going to do. We'll lift the car up and then we'll get straight into the oil change. Okay, so we've got the car inside now. We need to know a couple of things. First thing we need to know is where to put the oil once we've drained the old oil out. Luckily on Subarus, they're quite nice and they give you a nice big yellow cap here with a little picture that says engine oil on it. Some cars don't have this. Some cars will have a black cap. Some cars will have a red cap. Some cars will have um, a black cap that doesn't have anything written on it whatsoever. So each car will be different and you will need to identify where the oil filler cap on your car is. Good way of doing that is uh, Google Images or something along those lines. They are often a good way to find it. Uh, online forums and stuff as well, if you're not sure where you're looking. Okay, the next thing we need to look at is how to check the oil level when we're filling the oil. So, again, on a Subaru, 
this little yellow stick right next to the oil filler cap is how we check the oil level in the engine. Some cars will have different dipsticks around the engine bay. So this Subaru has actually got two yellow ones, which is a bit confusing for some people sometimes. So this one here next to the oil filler cap is our oil engine oil level. You can tell that by the little engine oil sign that it has on top of the dipstick. There is another one down here at the back of the engine, which is also yellow. That's for your automatic transmission fluid level. So this one down here, that's for your automatic transmission oil or your gearbox oil. That one we're not going to worry about today. I'll probably show you that one in a bit of a later video. So what I always like to do is before I do a service on an engine, I always like to check the oil level that's in it. If it's low, it means that the engine could either be leaking oil from somewhere or it could actually be burning the oil, which is a sign of a further engine issue. So the first thing we're going to do is check the engine oil level in it, which I'll do now. Okay, so I've just grabbed a clean rag, so we're just going to pull the engine oil dipstick out here, all the way out, wipe it off. Yep, nice and clean, no oil left on it. Put it back in, all the way down, back out, and check the oil level. The oil on this is completely full, spot on. Very dirty though. If you look at the rag there, very dirty oil in it, so it definitely needs to be changed. But the oil level is, is spot on, which is good. So that means that we're not leaking oil from anywhere, or we're not burning oil inside the engine, which is also good. Be mindful though, sometimes if you buy a car that is second hand and you go to check the engine oil level, sometimes the previous owner may have topped it back up without actually fixing what's wrong with it. So just be, be, just be mindful of that. Okay, so the next thing we need to find with the car is the component location. So we need to find where the oil filter is on the car. Okay, so some Subarus will have the engine oil filter mounted on top of the engine. Some Subarus will have the engine oil filter mounted on either the left hand side of the engine or the right hand side of the engine or underneath. Okay, so on this car, the engine oil filter is underneath. So now what I need to do is I need to lift the car up so I can get underneath and get to the oil filter and the engine oil drain. Okay, so a couple of things to keep in mind. When we're lifting the vehicle, we need to make sure that we're using a proper lifting point. If you go off part, a different part of the body, you can damage the vehicle or the car can actually be very unsafe to be underneath. When lifting the vehicle, you need to use the appropriate lifting points. Every single vehicle will have one. Refer to your owner's manual to find out where yours are and what they look like. Alrighty, so we now have the car lifted up. Now we're gonna jump underneath and have a look at what we need to take off to get to the drain plug and the engine oil filter. Okay, so the first thing we can see when we get underneath the Subaru, so the Subaru has a very big plastic cover that covers all of the bottom of the engine. We need to take that off. So what we'll do is we'll take it off and we'll have a look underneath. Okay, so now that we've got this bottom cover off, we can see the oil filter is located there, just on the bottom of the engine, and our oil drain plug is located there also on the bottom of the engine. So what we want to do first is we want to undo the oil filter and make sure that we can definitely undo it and then once that's loose we will then undo the drain plug for the engine oil. Okay so the couple of tools we're going to need to do this our filter strap and our 3 8 drive ratchet with the extension on it. So put this in here put the filter strap over the filter just adjust this up to the right size so I got about the right size there I reckon This up through here, through the exhaust, like so, and then basically we just want to wind up the tension on the strap, all the way around the filter, and then just turn until it goes like that. Put our oil drain under there, loosen off the filter. Uh, get a big mess all over yourself and just like that we have oil draining out we appear to have lost our lights in the garage too all right so we appear to have lost our light for the garage but that's okay we can go without that for the moment what i'm going to do now is i'm just going to undo that oil filter the rest of the way off now that the oil stopped running out of it and we'll take the old one off a bit more oil coming out now and that is the old oil filter off. 
So what I'm just going to do here is I'm just going to allow the oil to continue draining out, the last of the oil around the filter housing. Just let that run out. Then I'm just going to give the ceiling surface a little bit of a wipe to make sure there's no uh, little bits of dust or dirt or anything like that that's got on it. A uh, really important thing as well, which I'll show you in a second, is to make sure that the older, the o-ring of the old filter is not still on the filter housing. I'll show you that in a second. Okay, I'm just going to give this one a bit of a wipe down. That's all nice and clean. Okay, I've grabbed a new filter. Okay, so this here is our new oil filter. Like I was saying before, you want to make sure that the o-ring, that bit there, the black bit, from the old filter is not still on the housing. If you do that, you'll end up with two o-rings on there. When the uh, oil pressure builds up, it'll pop the other O-ring off and it will make a big oily mess everywhere. So, double check, no O-ring on there. The surface is all clean, we'll screw the new filter on. Okay, so I didn't show in the video there, but I actually put a light film of fresh oil on the um, O-ring on the filter, which will just help it uh, come off next time when you go to change it the next time. Um, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to do the filter up. So when you do it up, what you want to do is you want to go all the way as tight as you can by hand and then a quarter of the turn with the strap and ratchet. So we're going to do it up as tight as we can by hand, then a quarter of a turn with the strap and the ratchet. Okay. Grab the strap. Put it on do up. Just be careful not to dent the filter when you do this as well. Don't put too much pressure on it. Yep, quarter of a turn with the strap, lovely. So that's the oil filter replaced. Now we're going to drain the rest of the engine oil out. Okay, so I've just repositioned the oil drain container under the drain plug. So we'll grab a spanner and we'll undo that. Okay, so we've got our 17 mil spanner here and we're just going to undo the drain plug. Which is very tight for some reason. There we go. Loose it off. So we're going to carefully undo the drain plug, which is quite tight, could potentially have a bad thread on it. Undo it. Keep undoing it. There we go. Engine oil is draining out there now. If you see how it's coming out on a little bit of an angle there. You want to chase it with the drain container just to make sure that it doesn't go all over the floor. Otherwise you'll have a big mess to clean up. It's just draining out of there nicely now. It's very black oil, very dirty. Not particularly what you want inside your engine. Okay, so that oil has slowed right down there now. So that's all drained out. What we'll do now is I've just put a new uh, copper washer on the drain plug. Some of you may have a uh, copper washer kit, some of you may not. Uh, you've got to have a bit of a look at the old one. If it is able to be reused then you can reuse it but it's always recommended to replace it when you do. So I'll go and put the drain plug back in. I did just check the thread on the drain plug as well. It's got a little bit of a sort of it's been a little bit damaged at some stage but it'll be okay. I was too concerned about it, I get a new drain plug. Okay. So when you're doing up the drain plug, they don't need to be super tight. Just all the way till it's touching and then just nipped up. They just need to be firm, do not over tighten them. What happens with the drain plug is when it gets hot and cold constantly, it'll get tighter and tighter. Then the next time you go to change your oil, it will be very, very tight and hard to undo. All I'm doing now, just wipe off any excess oil that's around under the engine especially on the Subarus around where you've taken the oil filter off. If there's a little bit of oil here that's just gone onto the exhaust, make sure to wipe all that off as best as you can. Otherwise, when you start the car up, if there's oil on the exhaust, the, oil, the exhaust will start to burn the oil and it'll get quite smoky. And it will smell horrible. Okay, and here we have got our old oil out of the engine, which is very black and not nice looking. So it definitely needed to be replaced. Okay, so now that we've got the old oil drained out and the new oil filter on, we need to put the fresh oil in the engine. Um, if you're not sure what sort of oil your car takes, 
most auto parts shops will be able to tell you. Um, if you want to look it up yourself, there are some good websites about I'll leave some links in the description. They're called NetLube sites, so basically they tell you exactly what oil your car takes for every different component, whether it be gearbox, power steering, coolant, engine, anything like that. It'll tell you all of them. So I'll leave those links in the description. Go check them out if you want to. Alright, so what we're going to do now is we're going to put the fresh oil in. So I'm just going to take this cap off. Grab my funnel, which I'll probably take the big long bit off. Put this down in there, like so. Nice fit in there. We'll grab our oil. So the oil that this Subaru takes is a Castrol 5W30, which I've got here. So we'll put this oil in under the cap. We've just got to get rid of this special little seal that they've got on them. All right, and start pouring. This car takes about four liters of oil. An important thing to know as well before you go putting oil in so you don't overfill it. So I'm going to put about three and a half liters in and then I'll check the, check the level. Okay, that's about four liters in there now. Take the funnel out. The cap back on. Okay, and we'll recheck our oil level. So again, wipe the dipstick down. That's so nice and clean. All the way back in. Out. Okay, so. Still got a little bit more to go. One thing you've just got to keep in mind as well, when you start the car and the oil filter fills up with oil, it will actually drop the oil level down on the dipstick as well. So you'll need to recheck it after you've started the engine. That. Also when you've got your car up on jacks as well, it does change the position of the engine. So technically this is not on flat ground. Engine oil level needs to be checked on flat ground. So, what I'm meant to do is once I get the car back down on the ground, I will need to double check just to make sure it is the right level. So, we'll check again there, grab our rag. Wipe down. Back in there. Absolutely spot on. Perfect. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to quickly start the car up. When you start the car up, you want to check your oil pressure light and just make sure that after a few seconds that light definitely goes out. So we'll just start the car up and see how it goes. Sounds good. Oh, as good as it can do for a boxer engine. I'll just let it run for a little bit, let all that oil get through the end from there. Alright, let's go back and switch it off. Now that it's been running for a little bit, just check underneath, make sure there's no leaks or anything coming out. Which there's not, so that's perfect. Alright, we will recheck our oil level. What you need to keep in mind as well, um, and again this can be found in your owner's manual, some cars, the marks on the dipstick will mean different things. So in the Subaru, especially uh, this one here, the dot on the bottom of the dipstick and the dot um, about an inch up, they're the difference between low and full. So when it's full, you want the oil level to be matching the top uh, little dot taken out, of the, taken out of the dipstick there. When it's low, it will be on the bottom one, um, or it'll be underneath that. Anything in between is pretty much okay. Um, should probably top it up so it's always on that full level, then that way you'll know when you go to service it, like I said before, if the oil level is dropping down due to a leak or the engine's burning you or some other way. Um, what you also want to keep in mind, some manufacturers have got hot and cold marks on the dipsticks. 
So when the oil is cold, it should be on a certain level. Once the engine's hot and at an operating temperature, the oil will uh, go to the next level. Um, they'll often have H and C stamped um, in the gauge. Often with ones that are the full and low level, they'll have an F and an L uh, marking which one's which. If you're not sure, just check in the owner's manual for the car, or if you don't have the owner's manual, you can check online as well. Okay, so that's pretty much it for this video. Um, I don't have too much more to explain, that's just how to do a basic oil change. Um, keep in mind, uh, the location of the oil filter on the car will be different for every vehicle. This one's underneath, some cars will be in different spots. The type of oil that cars take will be different as well, so you need to make sure you're putting the right oil in for the right car. Um, and yeah, just make sure those basic things, when you're doing up the sump plug, they don't need to be super tight, just nipped up and just nice and firm, not you know, you don't need a breaker bar on there to try and do them up. Um, when you change the oil filter, just make sure that second O-ring off the old filter definitely comes off and it's not still stuck up on the filter housing. Wipe the filter housing down to make sure there's no debris. Light film of oil on top of the filter just to make sure that it goes on there nice uh, and it makes it does make it easier to get off next time as well. Um, so yeah, that's how to do a basic oil change on an engine. Uh, if you do have any questions or anything like that, put them in the comment section below. Don't forget to give the video a thumbs up if you like it. Uh, if you've got any suggestions for things you'd like to see me do in the future, um, just let me know. Leave it in the comments below. If you like this channel and you want to see more videos like this, press the subscribe button as well. And I'll see you guys in the next video. See ya. Oh, and don't forget to put the big cover back on the bottom.